So if there's one area, is if there's an area of your life where you don't feel successful, this episode is for you. Listen on to hear the number one skill I'm focusing on in the at the moment to feel successful in all areas of my life. Hi, welcome to Joyful Eating, episode 177. So today we're going to be talking, I'm going to share with you, 99% of my effort goes into this one skill. But before we get to that, the best bite I had this week, I on Saturday morning, I or Saturday lunch, I or Saturday morning I went to the farmer's market and I got this amazing broccolini. You know, it's just like, it's so green and so fresh. <laughs> um, and so I just steamed some of that or boiled boiled it um boiled it and then I served it with poached eggs and then I'd made some pesto so we'd had guests over on the Friday night and my Irishman had bought this like you know really expensive bunch of bunch of out of season basil <laughs> to for the pizza and so I, it was starting to go bad in the fridge so I was like okay I'll quickly make some pesto serve that with the poached eggs and broccolini and then had I roasted some extra pine nuts and oh, no, I had them from left over from a salad from Friday night so I had these extra pine nuts used them and some olives and actually the, I didn't even need the olives it was so good like just that simple combo of poached eggs with veggies and like a good sauce is yeah like I could eat it every day <laughs> okay so um plan for today is first I'll share the story behind this episode and then we're going to look into exactly what is this number one skill that 99 of Um, percent of my effort goes into and then we're going to talk about what exactly that skill is why it's helpful and I'm going to share with you some examples about of like how I actually use this in my life and then we're going to look at like three steps to um to help you like build this skill like the three steps to focus on and then I'm actually going to just I've decided to add in an extra bonus um segment into the into the podcast where I share my sprint goal. So, and I'll explain more about what that is when we get to that section and we'll wrap up with the next step. So, ah, yes. Story behind this episode. So a few weeks ago, I had a really great conversation with Marissa, one of my clients who used to be in the Naturally Healthy Club, who has uh, like really, you know, I can't remember how much weight she's lost, but she's lost a heap of weight. She's feeling really good in her clothes. She's one of my favorite clients. And so I was just, uh, just caught up with her and, uh, yeah, she mentioned in when we were when we were talking about how she still listens to the podcast every week just to get that like to have that check in of oh, yeah like this is this is these are my people and this is what I like so she doesn't get off track and um and yeah and she just mentioned that she'd really enjoyed I did an episode recently on uh how I like I was struggling with insomnia and how my perimenopausal uh related insomnia and how I'd solve that. And she had mentioned that that was helpful for her. Like when I was sharing like what had, you know, struggles in my life. So she's like, yeah, let's do more of those. Um, So that was one, one aspect of that, that inspired this, this episode. And then the other was there's a business coach or she's actually not a coach. She's like, she's actually in the, in the trenches, like, you know, building businesses and her name's uh, Layla Hormozzi. And she has a podcast and a YouTube channel. Anyway, I was just on YouTube, like uploading a video one day and she had this video called like 99% of my effort goes into this one skill. And I was like, I had to click, click, I had to watch it. (laughs) Um, And so she shared what her one skill was, but I was like, that's such a good title. I'm going to use that. And it got, because it got me thinking about like, what is the, the like most, where do I invest most of my effort hers was in developing her people but where's and I was it got really me really thinking about it so without further ado what is the number one skill that I I use and I actually shout out to Layla like if you are an entrepreneur and you want some like really good practical tips from a like a strong businesswoman like I really love her her content like she, her podcast is great and her YouTube channel is good too um so yeah what is this number one skill that most of my effort goes into? And it's it was so easy for me to identify it, but it's definitely the skill of self coaching. So the and so when I say self coaching, what 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 do I mean by that? And basically, it's it's like Dan Sullivan calls it thinking about your thinking. <laughs> so it's like and so how I like when you self when you coach yourself, it's like observing the thoughts that you're having, and then noted just noticing. It. You know, are these thoughts helping me in this moment or not? And if they are, great, like keep thinking them. But if they're not actually like using the, like coaching yourself to to let go of the thoughts that aren't helpful and redirect your thinking onto thoughts that are 
helpful. And so that, that this skill, like of being able to coach myself, it is the number one thing that helps him be successful in any area of life. And, and the thing is that the area of my life at the moment, well, actually forever, the area of my life that's been the least, I'm the least successful in is my business and in my ability, particularly my skill around selling and promoting myself, uh, which comes from a long, anyway, we won't go into why, (laughs) why that, why that's a struggle for me, but like that self-belief, even though I've been in business for 13 years, I still am really shaky on that. And so what I'm always doing. And one thing that I'm really focusing on this year is just doing experiments to help to coach myself and to, to get myself out of the negative thinking that I have around my ability to sell. Cause when I look at my, the other areas in my life where I do feel successful, like my, my weight and my relationship with food and, you know, I feel fairly successful in my parenting and in my marriage and so, and in my relationships and, like I observe like the thoughts that I th- think about parenting and my relationship and like my relationship with food and my health are so different to the thoughts that I think about business. So just having that, that observation has helped me go, okay, cool. So if I want to feel more successful in my business, all I need to do is is work on changing these, these like program pre-programmed thoughts that I have about myself that are holding me back. Um, so yeah, this is, that's, I guess that goes into a bit of the why this is like, why I can see, why I see this as the number one skill and why like it mindset is everything. And when I work with people and I coach people, getting the mindset piece right is the number one thing that I do as a coach to help them, whether that's learning to feel confident in the kitchen with, with joyful cooking, or whether that's helping them lose weight with ease, like Marissa's done in the Naturally Healthy Club it's always just getting the mindset right, getting the thoughts right. And then the rest follows, like the actions and the results follow from the mindset work. So that's what this skill is. That's when I am. So when I talk about self-coaching, it's right. Like, so you can be coached by a coach or you can coach yourself. And I do definitely do both. I've definitely invested thousands and thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in coaching to get my brain coached. But I actually think like there's, a lot of value and like, cause the thing is like you're, co- you're even when you're working with a coach closely, they're not inside your head all the time. So in order to get the most out of coaching, then like learning to coach yourself is, is a, a really like, it is not the where 99% of the effort of my effort goes for that reason, because a coach can't be in your head all the time. So that's the 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 why and what. Now to like bring this to life, I thought I would share some examples of how exactly how this plays out in my in my head. So welcome into Jules's head. Great. <laughs> um, maybe what not what you're expecting today. So examples. So Friday night I mentioned that we had some friends over, and so I decided to make this apple pie, like a deep dish apple pie, because it's like apple season, and I'm really getting into baking again, and I love making pastry. Anyway, so. I'd, set the intention before I started making the pastry on and making the pie on Friday afternoon that, you know, wasn't going to pick when I was cooking. Cause I had to have a history of when I'm baking, just picking and picking, picking, and then like feeling really gross. And then when it comes to the guests are here and we're having dinner, like I'm already full. And then it's like, oh, I'm eating just because I don't want to look like a weirdo who's not eating their food and <laughs> the food that they've just prepared. So I really didn't want to have that that feeling of being gross. I wanted to feel hungry at dinner time. So I'd actually set the intention. And then of course I was making the pastry and I was starting to get a bit stressed out about when I was rolling it out because it was more crumbly than I thought. And I just automatically started putting, um, like putting some pastry in my mouth, like started eating, eating the raw pastry, which I actually do love raw pastry. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. Um, but I just noticed what was going on. Like I paused, paused, and I just asked myself, do I want this? And like, and like, it wasn't even tasting that good. It was a pastry. I hadn't actually ever made pastry using lard before. It was a combo of lard and butter. And it had this a little bit of a porky flavor to it, which was a bit weird. And I'm like, I don't know how this is going to go in the pie. But I was like, when I asked myself, paused and asked myself that question, like, do I really want this? I was like, no, I want to feel hungry for dinner. And I connected, reconnected with my, like my, my desire of like not picking when I was, was making the pie. And like, like it was just instantly, I just went, oh yeah, cool. So I just kept rolling 
and then made the rest of the pie, cooked the apples with the sugar, everything, and got it into the oven, got it out of the oven without picking at anything. Even the like crispy bits that had fallen off in the, onto the bottom of the tray in the oven, I did have a bit of an urge to pick at them, but I was like, no, no, I want to, I'll feel better if I wait till dinner. So those two, that thought, like that was, that's two examples there of me coaching myself. So first is like asking myself, pausing and asking myself, do I want this? But then the second uh, um, example of me coaching myself was when I had that urge to have the crispy bits and I was like you know I asked I can't remember, what did I just whatever I just said like that was the thought that went through my head of like no it'll be better if I wait so that's one example and then another example of me coaching myself like just and I, I'll, I'll give I'll do a parenting one because I think it can be helpful to see this in how this applies to different situations so this morning <laughs> my Irishman's um in Melbourne, he's tra he's traveling for work a lot at the moment. And so normally it's his job to like get the boys ready for school and get them breakfast and stuff. But I'd, um, I had, see, so he was away, so I was doing it. And I, I like normally do a couple of hours of work and then I go um, and take them down to the bus. So I'd gone in to the house early and normally like they're meant, they're meant to like be re ready, rest, dressed and ready for school before they start having, call it watch time, but having screen time. Came in, Fergal's on the couch in his PJs playing Fortnite, this video game. And so like, this was, I was like, this isn't starting. So I'm like, Fergal, come on, you know, go get dressed. And so it's on his case a little bit. And then that was like, it started, and I was getting the breakfast ready. And then he started to be, he was just, he's, he's 11. So he's I, like just getting, he was in one of those, like, like, shall we say, what would, how would we describe it? Not in a very cooperative mood, <laughs> like everything was going wrong. I think he hadn't been, he wasn't doing very well in the game. Maybe he was getting beaten. So he was really frustrated. And, that, and then he started taking the frustration out on me. And so this was, and then he was like criticizing his brother and like, you know, all this stuff. And so it was getting worse and worse. And then, he, then I was like, breakfast is ready. And he was like, no, I don't want to eat. I don't want it. What is this crap? And I was just like, I'm not going to let you speak to me like that. And so I could feel myself starting to get angry about the situation. And, and the thought was like, I could just observe myself thinking like he shouldn't be doing this. Right. And so that was making me feel like getting angry about it. So I just noticed that I was getting angry. I just removed myself from the room. I actually went into the bathroom, went to the loo. I need to go to the loo anyway, but it was just like got myself out of the room and then just took pause and thought about like, okay, how do I want this to go? And just had a little regroup when I was in the loo. And I just realized he doesn't want to eat his breakfast. He doesn't have to eat his breakfast. <laughs> um, and by this stage he was dressed. So I was like, okay, cool. So I just came back out and then I just said to him, cool. If you don't want to eat your breakfast, that's fine. And I was going, I wanted to go for a run, like just a quick 20 minute run before the bus we took them down to the bus. So I was like, I'm going for my run. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Um, if you want to have your breakfast, cool. If you don't, don't, uh, yeah, like, like as long as you're ready, you're ready. As long as you're ready for the bus, that's fine. And so went for my run, had a great run was in the frosty morning. I love winters. <laughs> it's so nice. Like the air's so fresh and crisp. Um, and I've got my really warm gloves on came home and he, there was like, um, came home, boys are ready to go. And there was a note on the, um, on the kitchen bench where Fergal is like, dear mama, sorry, I, uh, didn't eat my breakfast, love Fergal. And so, and then he was all back to normal Fergal, not, not frustrated, angry Fergal. And I was like, amazing. <laughs> like, <clears throat> so, so grateful that I'd coach myself to, just pause and go realize, okay, it didn't matter if he didn't eat his breakfast. Because otherwise, if I hadn't have coached myself, I could have kept fighting. I could have kept going, hey, and I could have been gone into the threats of like, you know, going to take screen time away and blah, blah, blah. And, but I didn't. I was just like, okay, cool. It's fine. No dramas. He's the one that's going to be hungry later. No dramas. And it completely changed the the rest of the morning. Like we went down to the bus together, like we having having a chat went at the bus stop and then he got on the bus love you have a great day and yeah it was so helpful to have that self-coaching um so that's a, a parenting example um what else did I have oh yeah like so a motivational example so just before I so to, this morning I taught a class actually that's why I've got all this <laughs> these uh don't normally have ingredients lying around so I taught a cooking class this morning and then after that I was just took a break and was sitting in the sun and it's like lovely winter's day and 
like had a coffee in the sun and then I was like thinking about what I have to do next. Oh yeah. And I did an Instagram post uh, to talk to people about my free class that I'm running. And so of course, when I'm in there, I was like starting to like have this urge to keep scrolling. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, it's so nice sitting here in the sun with my coffee. I could just stay here for a bit longer. And so like that thought I could sneaky thought, I could just stay here for a bit longer. And it was a little bit of like, oh, I deserve this. Cause I was, you know, been working hard this morning. And but then I stopped myself and went, hang on, like, if I, if I keep scrolling, like, I'm going to have less time to record the podcast. I'm not going to, I'm going to be like scrambling to catch up with the rest of my day to get my things done because I'm you know, blowing off my, my own schedule that I've set with myself. And I was like, th- just had that minute of thinking through how me sitting here enjoying this sun was going to put future jewels, this afternoon jewels under pressure to get things done. And I was like, I don't want that. No, let's just go. And so I was able to like shut down the phone, make myself another cup of tea and go like go into work, even though it's like the most beautiful sunny day. And it was just that thought of like, I don't want to like, I don't want to be under pressure later. That, that helped me do that. So, so there we go. That's three examples. Actually, one more, more example. So last night, uh, when, so yesterday, like I'm feeling a bit, was feeling a bit like premenstrual and just bloated and not great. And then we had, we're having dinner and I had it like about, I don't know, half of my dinner. And I was like, like, I knew that I like had had enough to eat. I just didn't feel, I felt, you know, didn't want more food, but it was like, you know, when you're feeling a bit ratty and you're just kind of like wanting to keep eating. And I, so I just had this thought, I coached myself in the moment. Like I knew what was going on because I, so practiced at it and I was like hang on more food isn't going to make me feel better now and and I was like yeah I know (laughs) like to myself and so I just put the plate you know away from me so it wasn't right in front of me anymore and you know continued the conversation with at the dinner table and then you know it was fine like I ended up you know putting the leftovers away so I've actually will have them for another meal and it, it was really easy but if I hadn't have had that thought about how more food isn't going to make me feel better now. I could have easily finished the plate, plate, which in the scheme of things, you know, not a big deal. But if I keep doing that every single day, all of a sudden my weight does become a problem. So, so yeah, there's some examples. The skill of self-coaching, number one thing, spend most of your time doing it and I guarantee it will change your life. Um, so I've given you some examples. Let's now look at the three steps to like, how can you learn this skill yourself? So first step with any skill is just decide that you want to do this. So decide to start noticing the thoughts that are going to on in your head. Decide to start thinking about your thinking, like just observing what the thoughts are happening. And um, and if you want some, like if this is a new skill, like or it probably will be a new skill for you, like you may might want to just have an anchor to remind yourself to do that. So whether that's you set a reminder on your phone or you just decide that, um, you know, every time you have the urge to pick up your phone, you're going to just observe like, oh, what am I thinking about? Or maybe it might be you use when you go to the loo as the anchor of like when you're washing your hands after you go to the loo, just use that as your trigger for, okay, when I'm washing my hands, just check in with, you know, what am I thinking? And so, and, or it can be anything like your trigger can be anything, but just so that you have this, that concrete reminder every day that like all the, like multiple times a day, probably to just start observing the thoughts that you're having. So we want to decide to do that. And then the second I, I thing that I can think can be helpful is to actually create an intentional habit of setting, setting aside some time, whether that's two minutes, half a minute, five minutes, preferably less, so it feels doable, where you, every day you're going, you're, you're actually going to just spend a little bit of time coaching yourself. So just observing what you like your thoughts. And I find it really helpful to write, write it down. So I, I would recommend that, but you don't have to, like, it can be, you just, you start, you, you think, think through your day and think, well, what am I thinking at the moment? How am I feeling? And just see what thoughts come up. And then it's just a matter of practicing, like just starting to observe and then practicing, just observing how, and particularly when you notice things and like my example, when I was getting angry, I noticed that. And that's a big trigger for me to, to tune in. Like, what am I thinking and feeling now? Cause this isn't feeling good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just a matter of practice. And then of course, w- learning to find new thoughts as well is another, another skill, but just from the, you'll go a long way just by it's, starting this habit by tuning in and starting to bring awareness into what's going on. 
So that is my recommendation. My invitation to you this week is to, is to, is to, yeah, experiment with learning this skill of, of coaching yourself. And, um, and yeah, so my segment, the extra segment that I wanted to include, I've decided to include in the podcast or to experiment with is um, just sharing. So each week uh, in the Staying Naturally Healthy group, I, um, I actually have set a, a goal. I encourage my students, my um, people in the group to, to set a sprint goal, whether that's for one day or a week or no more than two weeks where we work, we, we're like, we're focusing on something each week. So, or for, for short periods of time. So any, it can be anything to do with health. Um, so mine, I thought I'd just start sharing what my sprint goal is each week to give you, you guys a little bit of an update. And so that you I get a little bit of extra accountability as well. Um, so my sprint goal this week is actually to, um, to work on this skill of coaching myself, work on that habit of coaching myself because I'm doing uh, this week as I, when I'm recording this, I'm doing a launch. So opening up in um, registration for my joyful cooking classes and my, that, that group coaching program. And I've mentioned earlier that like sales and business is my biggest area of uh, opportunity for improvement in terms of being successful and how I see myself. So one of the key things I'm doing this week, my sprint goal this week is to coach myself every day around how I'm feeling about and thinking and feeling around this, um, this launch so that rather than letting myself go into the normal negative fear and loathing, self-loathing and compare and despair and like the, the river of misery as my coach, my business coach calls it, to, so to make sure that I, if I do go into the river of misery, I coach myself out of it uh, and actually you, know, you have more th helpful thoughts. And so I've just set, that's my goal this week. And I've just set aside some time. So normally in our schedule, pick the boys up from the bus and then uh, we normally like do homework and um or read, I'll sit with Finbar while he does some reading and then they have screen time and I have some me time. So it's like as soon as Finbar's finished his reading and I've put away his readers, then I'll, I'll go into my office and just open up a note on my computer and just brain dump what's what's going on in my head, <laughs> specifically around how am I feeling about this this goal that I have for this specific launch. Um, and so that's my, that's my sprint goal this week is to just coach myself every day. And I'm keeping track of whether I'm doing that or not. Uh, and I actually have enlisted Emma, who is um, actually, I've got a new member on the Stone Soup team, which is very exciting. I should have mentioned that. Um, so she is the new community manager for Joyful Cooking. And she's also uh, volunteered to coach me, <laughs> be an accountability partner. So I'm just messaging her to say my self-coaching is done uh, so that I don't like have that extra incentive to not blow it off. And that's my spring call this week. So, and I'm feeling so far so good. <laughs> uh, I feel like it's really making a difference. So long episode this week. I'm excited for you to delve into this uh, skill of self-coaching and uh, and my, yeah, I guess the next step is to, for you to decide and start practicing. And also if you'd like my help to become amazing at self-coaching so that you can change your relationship with food and your body and get to your ideal weight and also like have this skill so that you can use it for all the other areas in your life as well, then you're welcome to come and join me in the Naturally Healthy Club. So uh, enrollments are closed at the moment, but if you just um, go to Stone Soup, so if you Google Stone Soup and you'll be able to get your name on the wait list and you'll be the first notified when I open up enrollments the next time. Okay. Have a fantastic week and I will catch you next week.